saw this van. And then the jack moved on him with I slammed my car sideways in front of him. <laughs> spun it. I had the bends. No, no, I had the focus. I spun it on him like that, Ruben. Really so we're going to just have a, a, a quick breakdown of your experience and get some insight so our viewers understand the journey that it's not as simple as you know, yeah, it's far from it. <laughs> I was saying, you know what I was about to say. Wait, see, first thing you said, well, first thing come to my mind when you said that, you better know it's a cold world. Ain't hey, no one cares, yeah? No one owes you nothing. And no one wants to hear your sub stories. <laughs> and that's the truth of the matter. You know, people always want to talk about they come from nothing. I find that disrespectful, man. Because, yeah, my man, I've been the richest. But to say I come from nothing, it's a lie, innit? Because for me, a family of morals. And they're raised by queens, we got something. I never say from nothing to something, car. Uh, that's a disrespect to my mother. What, what school did you attend? I went to Ernest Bevan. That's yeah, a that yeah, reputation. Yeah, that school is legendary, yeah. I went to the confiscated draw, and I was just, there air guns, the jiffies. You know, you make my spray, I thought my was spraying lemon on, man. I didn't realize all the bleach and the madness, and my shooting in each other's eyes, you know, so. When you think about it, when you know that, yeah, it is a mad school. Funny thing is, when you look at their more elaborate successes, they came from our schools, came from our places, whether it's the business man, whether it's the footballers, whether it's this or that. Bevan got a lot of that. So yeah, man, I was red time, man, do I die? I don't know, from young, I always wanted to own my own thing. From school days, I know I would have to hire myself because I couldn't even listen to teachers. I've made them in the college. If I got kids out of college, I called the teacher's his mum and to ask me why I ain't in Ask no questions. I tried to come off the road. Like I sold my land, I threw it, got rid of it, so it weren't in my hands no more. I've done that. And I went hard, but I used to walk around. I used to wear my suit to job center just in case I get a phone call and I need to go for an interview there and then I'm ready, innit? I was known for leaving jobs after one month. I know from the second day I don't want to be there, but I need to get this first pay. Once this first pay comes through, gone. Relying on the money ain't always it. If you've got a good enough idea, there, you can get that money. You can start a business for minimal. It's better you start with the umph and the idea rather than the money. Like I remember Stat Town, we've got a company we started called Stat Town, and I started that company just for that point, and I used 250 pounds. I said, man can go buy some Jordan, or man can start a business. Simple as that. I like, understand you've got to make sacrifice, but make sure you can pay your basic bills and survive. It means you've got a part-time job and work the extra hours around it. And now that you've got internet, you, people, don't, people don't sleep. There's no sleeping no more because you could be trading in America whilst you're in England. You could be trading in Japan whilst you're in So there's some sort of way you can make money happen. So there's no excuse to say, oh, but if I work at the time, I can't do it. But when I started my big J's, I was working a full, full-time job. This thing that everyone's meant to be a boss or everyone's meant to have their own business, I think that's foolishness. A boss can't run without employees, full stop. And a business can't run without employees. Don't be afraid to take a loan. If you're afraid to take a loan, that means your business is probably whack because you don't believe you're going to get that money back. Don't be stupid and take a 50 grand loan and want to go selfridges and go buy clothes and look the part. Take minimal and grow. You've got to be patient and make sacrifices. Right, this new world of things, everyone wants it to drop on their lap straight away or everyone's believing this social media hype. No one ain't showing you their L's on social media. Stay in your own lane and do what you're doing because you'll see that you've gone past everyone soon. And that's another thing as well, don't be afraid to learn. If you just reach that product, one of them books say, if you want to make a flipping trainer company, go work in a trainer shop. Work for free. Don't even get in charge. Work for free. But if you're here for free, now I might bring you into certain meetings but I will never let you into. And all of a sudden, you're shaking hands with other business owners, other opportunities. You know what I mean? So don't be afraid to go in there. You have people saying, bro, I'm not doing that for free. Then f off. But then people are the same ones who are going to sign on for free and take the money for free and want to watch you from the background. And if they get an opportunity, they will take it, you know? These men will take the opportunity and leave you sitting there. And you're thinking, rah. You know, you know what my mum saying? Keeping it real goes wrong. You keep it so real that it's just you in the room by yourself at the end. <laughs> take your opportunities. That's one thing I would have done. I would have definitely stayed with parents for longer. Cause that, that was just money intake. You know what I mean? Whatever little idiot bills they had man paying, it was minimal compared to real life. Mm -mm. I'd be rich if I didn't have to leave home early and, and raise a you. <laughs> I don't have no fear, I'll just jump all in. As I always say, the only currency that's real currency in this world is time. Nothing else counts. Cause time's the only thing you can't get back. We'll be right back after this message. 
Take us through the what inspired you in, in regards to Squad Gigantic. From years, I always looked and thought, we have no representation. And if you ain't seeing no black superheroes, that means you will never feel in your heart that you could be yourself and be that powerful and great if that's what you're taking. And superheroes are major role models one way or another. Because the only way I got to write the novels is because I got ill. If I didn't get ill, it probably up to now, I'd probably wouldn't be written. Like everything I've done, everything I do is kind of showing our representation and pushing us forward and showing you that you can do it too, while still being yourself. But that's one thing that annoys me a lot of the time. It's that we feel like to make it, you can't be us. We'll get in there, they love our culture, they'll take from us, take from us, they want our coolness, they want our this and want us that. But when you come in, oh, yeah, a bit too aggressive, though, a bit too scary, a bit, a bit too black. You just tone that down a bit, black man. And then that's all. I ain't sure wherever I walk into, I'm me. And as a black man, that means I'm going to carry myself correct anyway. I love Marvel, innit? And I think Marvel kicked things in it more once it became live action and all the movies and that. I, like, I took their boldness. Their boldness to do what you want. You're a superhero. You do what you want. I was vexed with the Black Panther thing. As much as a lot of black people loved that, I felt that was kind of a, a backward step for black people. And I think it was done at a time where it was smart by Disney. Get Marvel by Disney. Elaborate on that, elaborate on By Disney, I think it was smart because how you got to look at it here, the biggest black movie still went black home. At a time when more black producers and directors started to come through, rather than leave to their own ownership, they still just jumped into the employment. They still jumped in, yeah, we'll pay you to come here, man, come here. Don't go with can come here. So it still stifled us. They starved us and deprived us and gave us this little cracker and we're like, oh yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're all dressing up, we're all candid. We're all this, we're all that. We're all running into the cinema and giving them the money. The final straw to make me start Big J's Kitchen was when I saw what KA was doing. They slipped up around me and they made that drink, Kenneth Abbott's Ginger Beer. And I realized KA stands for Kenneth Abbott's. And it's just some next kind of Columbus brother. He said he went around the Caribbean, took this, took that. So I'm saying, again, we don't have our own flavors. We're getting sold our culture back to us by people who don't put nothing back in us. Now, I'm not, I have no problem with everyone enjoying our culture, but let us own our <laughs> innit? So with Big J's, that was a source I started in my yard. I started about three products, sauce, drinks, and seasonings. I used to bang that out, like literally make it in my kitchen, bang it out. Purposely only used to go to like top quality butchers and delis. So like Moen and Sons and Clapham, Allen's and Mayfair, Baby and Sage, all them type of bougie spots. And they were killing the shelves. Then I managed to get the link to Selfridges. We had to now take the sauce that I'm making in the yard through to a big manufacturing plant, get them manufacturers to match the recipe correctly, working with them and doing that. At least 50, 60 racks with the internet just to get the first order in. You need certain accreditations to be on the shelf. The accreditation alone, if you try to get it yourself, it's costing 10 to 15 grand a year for them to just come and look at your premises. That's after having a big premises and all that. So the smart thing to do is to offload it, it? License it out, get someone to manufacture for you. So I had to find a manufacturer to go through the bull of manufacturers as well. That's another thing, little frauds and jingles. I'm thinking I've got a barbecue sauce itself in the summer. If I approach Selfridges or wherever for about April, May, we'll be ready. You know what I mean? So these Selfridges, Oxford Street. Big boy Selfridges, yeah. Selfridges we buy. Selfridges, Oxford Street, Boring in Birmingham, and Trafford Centre in Manchester. So we need the high street guy to take where the yardies are. Like, see some yardies having a barbecue out there, you know, buy. And they got regular, regular sauce on the counter. So I think there's three of us. I jumped out the way, left the room, jumped away. We did. Slap the sauces off the table, you know. They wanted to murder us. He said, put any sauce around, you know, man. They thought it was war with me, boy. They're like, rah, they, they're like, they were going to move to me. I can see it. I'm, I'm saying, watch, watch the move, laughing. And they, hey, go to the boot. So that man to the boot came out with crates of our sauce, put it on their table. Use that, don't want to use nothing else around. Nah, 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 nah. But they loved us. I roll with them sauces, that was my strap for me, but that was in the whip. I don't care, no matter where I go, I'm coming to your Christmas, I've got sauces. Like, I'm not going to take them out and be annoying, but if anyone needs, they can get. Because you never know what you're going to see. So I this van. I done the jack move on him, but I slammed my car sideways in front of him. Spun it. I had the bends. No, no, I had the focus. I spun it on him like that, Ruby. But this man's in South London as far as they're concerned. Back to what we're saying. I'm in South London from Century, so you know shit. I can make him do whatever I want him to do now because he's in himself. Yeah. 
I wanted to rob him, I could take the van, everything. He's scared. This big guy jumped out of the car at him and said, Oi, stay there. As long as we stay there. I walked to my boot slowly whilst looking him in his eye. I wanted to make it feel like I was moving and like he's going to get robbed. And I took about two, three of each sources out of my boot. Walked back up to him. I changed my whole tones. Yeah, f glad I saw you, mate. Your boss is expecting me. You just won't give him to me, can you? Gave him the saucer, he took it up to his boss room, but he, as I said, he'll take anything. And because the treatment, the my f I done there, he wants to have a story to tell. So he's going to give it to them. Gave it a day, and I saw them on Twitter. I mean, yeah, you get the wrong sources I sent to you. So I like, was you, my driver was f***ing himself. No, 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 no. Brought a relationship with that guy. His name was Justin Preston, bro. This guy was up. I didn't even realize how much stuff he was doing. Next week, I know I saw a sources on Channel 4 and his show. He was a TV presenter as well, doing food, this, that. Got it in there. Now he started putting money in front of the right people as well. We will sit down. Me and you will conversate in the car about going to lick down something because they'd done something to us or putting ourselves in situations was really risky. What we should be scared of doing. What can give us five years will take our life. But then we're scared to walk in the boardroom. A bunch of a couple stiff faced men who might say no. But we're scared to go do that and change our family's lives, change people around our lives. So that's why I always have that mentality that man's making it happen and they're not telling us no. Everyone's trying to just follow a pattern what's there. You're just gonna fall into the stream, bro. No one's gonna notice nothing. But you put one little piece of red into that stream, everyone's noticing the difference now. So be that piece of red. Worst you can do is lose a bag of money. You're in England, you know? Man, lose money, I just have the government pay my rent. Yeah, you will still survive. You might have taken a bit of embarrassment. You might have had a Mercedes today, then have a bus pass tomorrow. So what? So what? I had a Mercedes yesterday. I, at least I felt it, because I tried. The best thing, I know it's all cliche, it's good to fail. That I hate failing. But the best thing about failing or being seen or fell off or not be on it no more, you see who's real around you. I loved it. When you know, I stopped doing the source, enough people thought, right, man, fell failing on the engine that's what I was doing. But at one point, I was ready to start, start showing the man and fell off. You can't fell off, you're mad. Then, then within 10 minutes, I was like, hold on. So it's kind of good when they thought you fell off. Man, it bothering you for that. Man, it begging you for that. Man, it trying to holler you to come roll. No, 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 no. I'm like, nah, nah, it's good. Nah, just sieve up the bull. I called the number whenever after, and this person must have left in a half because their their voice machine, answer machine was like, I don't work in this hole no more. You can even message, but no one will probably fucking hear it. I was like, right, this is Rachel's. <laughs>